Renny Benjamin, one stock you like over at Raymond James is Fate Therapeutics. It's up over 40% year to date. It's a small company, about $200 million market cap, and they want to be big in blood. Tell me about the company. So Faith Therapeutics is developing um, several small molecules which modulate um, umbilical cord stem cells. And umbilical cord is actually being used more and more in bone marrow transplants. But there are a lot of problems with umbilical cords, including you know, trying to expand these cells and get them to work really well. Fate has developed you know, this, this drug that can now make these cells do better in the human body. And they're running a couple of studies, one in adults, one in pediatrics, looking at decreased infection rates, decreased viral reactivation rates, all of which so far has proven, um, you know, has shown that the drug is, seems to be working. So between that and their induced pluripotent stem cell drugs that they're, that they're developing, as well as some corporate partnerships that they've signed, including one with Juno Therapeutics, and recently I believe they did a, a pretty nice $32 million deal, bringing their total cash position north of $50 million. We think it's one of the, the better names in the regenerative medicine space. And you're also bullish on Pluristem. I uh, think it's down around 5% so far this year, another small company. Can you tell me about this one? They're in the biotherapeutics business based in Israel, right? Right. And so, you know, when we look at the regenerative medicine space, we look at it in buckets. Embryonic cells, adult cells, and umbilical cells. Pluristem is also looking at umbilical cord stem cells, except instead of using small molecules to um, uh, modulate these cells, they're actually dealing with the cells itself. They're almost kind of mini drug factories, okay? And they secrete a whole slew of factors. They've shown some very promising results in indications like critical limb ischemia, where there are no therapeutic options out there. Um, they now have gotten some very good regulatory feedback from both Europe and Japan that could potentially speed their way to the market um, for their cell therapies. They have a manufacturing plant in Israel, which has been FDA approved and approved in Europe. Significant cash, I think over $50 million, um, enough to get them through the clinical trials they need to and then eventually onto the market. And you're positive on Capricor. This is in the cardiovascular space. Uh, it's up, uh, I think, 15% or so, so far this year, but it was up over 70% earlier this year. What happened? Why the big drop off? So, so this is the hallmark of biotech, right? These stocks can move on a dime, usually for news flow, usually some sort of data. The company had announced some very interesting results that they were getting into the Duchenne muscular dystrophy space for one of their uh, earlier stage products. That and some funding that came in, not just from investors, but from, uh, uh, from groups that support you know, uh, th these indications like Duchenne muscular dystrophy, was enough for investors to, to start riding the coattails. That and the fact that it's a small name was enough to launch the stock. I think it went up almost 200%. Since then, it has come back down because, as I mentioned, data drives these stocks. There has been no data you know, being released in the near term. Going forward, though, this is an adult stem cell company. They're going after big ticket items like the cardiovascular space. The data to date has um, shown some promise, and J&J &J actually has an option to um, potentially move forward with the company and the therapeutic if they like the next set of data that comes out probably sometime next year. And then finally, you're a fan of Okada. Now, they're in the ophthalmology space. Can you talk about this one? So Okada is a very interesting name. Um, they're, in the em they're looking at embryonic stem cells, right? And what we like about it is that they're focused in the eye, which is a nice localized organ, right? The cells don't go anywhere else. They've shown very promising results in indications like dry AMD. Now, you may know wet AMD because Regeneron's Lucentis is a multi-billion dollar drug treating that indication. Dry AMD is even bigger with no therapeutic options. And these guys have shown in clinical data, which was published in The Lancet, some very impressive results, improving vision, if not stabilizing, you know, a leading cause of blindness in the U.S. If they move this uh, therapy forward, which they're planning to start pivotal studies in an indication called StarGuards this year, as well as phase two studies in uh, dry AMD later this year, uh, this has got huge market potential. We like the, you know, we like the company quite a bit for the areas they're targeting. All right, small companies, but we're going to watch them. Thanks a lot, Rennie. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Street.